Writing is a demanding profession and a selfish one. And because it is selfish and demanding, because it is compulsive and exacting, I didn't embrace it. I succumbed to it. Rod Sterling. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. We are back from our hiatus of a month. We're going into our fourth year of doing this podcast. And to start it off, to kind of kick off our anniversary celebration, we're going to go back to the beginning and redo some episodes that probably could use an update. We've stated more than once that this whole project is about informing people of things that we wish we knew when we were in their shoes. This comes in part because we know we are still learning and we hope to forever be learning about storytelling, about the writing process, about ourselves. So that means that on occasion, things will shift as far as our understanding of the storytelling process. This whole month, we'll be talking about episodes that we did and how we've changed and grown and something has shifted in our perspective since we did that episode originally. During our month of hiatus, one of the things that we did was hosted a writing retreat. And that kind of reminded us a little bit of our roots. But because of that, we we did get some new followers. We did get some new people with eyes on our podcast. So we want to go back and refresh and renew some of those old episodes with the perspective that we've gained over the last three years of learning and studying the craft. So we wanted to take this episode as a chance to talk about how we've changed and how that's influenced our podcast and how we hope to take that knowledge we've learned and apply it to these episodes in this month, especially where we're redoing those things that we've talked about before. We've said it before. We'll say it again. Writing is a journey and we are on that path with you just a couple of steps ahead. So all we're trying to do is tell you where to step in order to take the next step and grow your skill that much more. But I can tell you, if I could go back to episode one, Lee, and tell myself some things, one of the things I've learned since then would be to pay attention to my second draft a lot more than I did before. (laughs) Why is that? I held myself to a weird kind of standard for the first draft. So I would stop writing if there was a scene that scared me. Now I'm trusting my second draft, not just my edits to toward final draft, trusting that I can go back and say, okay, this scene needs to be written now and go back and write it later. What about you? Something that I would probably tell first episode me, and this is kind of scandalous considering the topic of our first episode, but I would absolutely tell myself that plotting is okay. Not in the sense that I need to sit down and make an entire outline before I write anything and I need to know all of the details about everything. No, that that kind of plotting, not for me still. But I do need to tell my back then self that it's okay to sit down if you're stalling and figure out what needs to happen in the story. One of the things that I've also learned and I would tell younger me is that it's okay to read a book and write a book at the same time. I had this weird idea in my head where I wanted to be reading something or writing something. I don't remember who said it, but there's a quote out there that says, reading is like breathing in and the writing is like breathing out. You need to be doing both of them almost simultaneously in order to have a healthy relationship with either one. Yeah, I think one of the biggest ways that I've changed is that I've actually released books. I've published two books since we started this podcast. I wrote two books since we started this podcast. I unfortunately have not finished writing the book that I was writing when I started this thing, but that's eventually, that's my white whale of of my books. (laughs) (laughs) But I started this podcast off as the editor. I was your editor, and I still am sometimes, but I have turned my focus a little bit more to being an author because that's my real passion. I love editing and it's great, but I've always wanted to write. I've always wanted to get my stories out into the world as well. And doing this podcast has really helped me get over a lot of the roadblocks that I was putting up for myself that kept me from being an author. Most obviously, my need for my first draft to be perfect. 
That has always been my problem. I always wanted my first draft to be perfect, to be publishable. And that's not possible. (laughs) And this podcast helped me get over that problem. So you've been here for every single one of these episodes. You have to have a favorite or two. Yeah, yeah, I do. Take a wild guess at my favorite episodes. (laughs) Anything that has to do with building magic. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) All of the world building, the magic episodes, those are my favorite ones. Season three specifically, when we really dug into that sort of system, that was our Write What You Don't Know series. We got into a lot of like monster creation. We got into magic systems and world building and all of those creative aspects of writing that I have always loved. One of my favorite episodes, and if I'm trying to point someone toward the podcast without pointing them toward a specific topic that answers a specific question, one of my favorite episodes is going to be the Hero's Journey bonus episode that just talked through step by step what the Hero's Journey looks like. I feel like once people start to recognize structure and recipes for success, people stop worrying about being unique and start worrying more about the story that they want to tell. So one of my favorite episodes has to be that Hero's Journey bonus episode. I wouldn't be me if my other favorite episode wasn't our ghosts episode, where we sat down and talked with a lady who does ghost tours. I'm a big fan of paranormal. I'm a big fan of ghosts. It's that weird hyperfixation of mine right along with true crime. And give me a true crime ghost, and that's just perfection. But I loved that episode because that episode is... Some of what kind of sparked and contributed to me eventually writing my current book, which is about ghosts. Along the same lines, I'm going to have to say another interview is one of my favorites. The Fight Right interview that we did with Carla Hook. She was a lot of fun because she was so eloquent and great at putting things into words that were just concepts I'd known by experiencing them. So it was great to have like that kindred spirit nerddom when it comes to writing fight scenes. And then, of course, we can't pass up our favorite episode of Why We Write Selfishly. That's our motto, is to write selfishly. And that episode typifies this entire podcast of why we do this, why we sit down and we pour our souls into writing. And it's because we want to, because we have a story that we need to tell, and we should be allowed to tell that however we want to. I was surprised when we were talking about this beforehand to find out that that particular episode was in season 13. It feels like it was just last year that we were talking about it. But it's, of course, so vital to who we are as people and who we are as a podcast. So I completely agree with that. Do you have any favorite series? I love our Monster Mash series because what's better than, you know, creating monsters? Yeah, And I also really liked the series Pearls from the Masters. And it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that we covered an entire episode about Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, it does. And of course, I wouldn't be me if I didn't say the Versus episodes. Those are some of my favorite. I know we did a whole series on it, but any of the times that we're butting heads, we get to present different points of view and I get to make fun of you. It's always a good time. And we get to be a little bit more boisterous and and ridiculous in the process because admittedly, there are many of those Versus episodes where our stances are a little more lax than we appear on the podcast, but it's a good opportunity for you guys to learn and see the valid points on both sides of the argument to decide where you fall. So, with Versus, are you willing to concede any of the fights that we've had? Okay, I will concede that maybe fan fiction is good for building an audience. That was one back in season 21, episode two, where I said fan fiction is more or less useless because you can't publish it. I have since gotten a fan fiction story published. So (laughs) conceding that one. Yeah. (laughs) I will concede that you're right about adverbs. Yes. Adverbs can be helpful. So long as they're not redundant. And that's my whole argument is redundancy is the true villain here. That is a hill I will die on. (laughs) So what's something you won't concede? Also in our versus season, in season 21, one of the concepts was 
the necessity of having romantic subplots. I tried it. I'm giving it a shot. I am in my second draft and almost done with that for my first story with a decent romantic subplot. And it sucks. I hate it. I'll never do it again. (laughs) What about you? There's got to be some hill that you're going to die on. I will die on the hill of that first episode. I know at the beginning of this episode, I said that plotting can be okay sometimes, but I will die on the hill that you don't need to plot everything. That is one that I will absolutely die on because you don't need to plot everything. If you're a pantser, embrace it. Be a pantser. You don't have to fit into the box of writing what everybody else thinks. In our next episode, we're really going to dive into the benefits and the negatives of each style and how you can find the balance between the two like I've found the balance between the two. But until then, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 